SpaceX Starlink has rolled out 222 software updates since January 1st. Has it helped? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination, that Zing the Bergamot. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX, Starlink, and how there was a ton of software updates as of late. Since January 1st, they say that there was 222 just Starlink updates. There's other updates that I'll get into in this video. That is a ton of updates. A lot of you have been writing into me, DMing me, and they're like, Joseph, has your Starlink been rebooting a lot? What is going on? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. It's been rebooting a bunch. It was like 12 reboots just in like less than a few days. Like, what is that? So they are the engineers saying they. The engineers are working hard at making latency lower. This is something that is very, very important to Elon Musk. He's talked about this in the past. He is an avid gamer. And if you didn't know it, if you do game, if you do first person shooters or any type of gaming, latency is very, very important so that things happen on time, that you're not behind everybody else, right? Let's say you're doing a first person shooter. If you aim at someone and you pull the trigger and now you're like, why didn't I hit them? Well, because they already moved, because they're sitting on a fiber connection and you're sitting on an extremely high latency connection, right? That timing is mission critical to be able to have an even playing field. Well, this also holds true when it comes to telecommuting, teleconferencing. Anytime that you're live, maybe you're doing a Zoom or you're doing a Google meeting or anything like that. This is very, very important. So like I said, SpaceX has been working really hard at this. We talked about it a lot on last night's live. There was a lot of people on the live last night. It was awesome. Thank you everyone for being here. Also, I just wanna make a quick notation that if you purchase Dark Moon Teas, uh, we're behind about two weeks, a week and a half. There's some of the organic ingredients that we get, they're just not available or they weren't available and they finally are coming back in stock. I will not use anything that is not non-GMO, make sure that it is non-radiated, it is organic and so on and so forth. I will not just use anything. So sometimes the teas are backed up a week or so. They're coming soon. Before we get into this, I wanna read a quick article from PC Magazine to you and then give you my commentary. Before we get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Also, if you want more Starlink content, I'll put a link over here. So when you're done watching this video, you can take a look at my other 250 some videos videos just on Starlink alone. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course, the why behind it all. If you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is J Christina. You'll get 15 additional percent off at checkout. If you think you're not gonna remember that promo code, that's fine. Go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. So let's jump right into this article. And then, like I said, I'll give you my commentary. And most importantly, I wanna hear from you down below. The company published new details on how SpaceX has been driving down the latency of Starlink with the goal of one day being under 20 milliseconds. SpaceX says it's made progress to drive down Starlink's latency by over 30% for US subscribers, citing improvements implemented over the past few months. On Friday, the company published a report that shed light on SpaceX Starlink's ongoing efforts to one day bring the latency down to under 20 milliseconds. Once again, like I said, this is Elon Musk's goal, sub 20 milliseconds. I think that's awesome. Keep in mind, 
fiber is sitting anywhere from about one millisecond to about 10 milliseconds. So if we can get sub 20, SpaceX will get really close to being on par with like cable companies. Cable companies on average are about 13 milliseconds, 15, 20, right around there. So we'll see if that ends up happening. I think that he can do it. Quote, in the United States alone, we reduced the mean latency by more than 30% from 48.5 milliseconds to 33 milliseconds during the hours of peak usage. That's very important. Worst case peak hour latency or P99, which is like the 99th percentile, has dropped over 60% from over 150 milliseconds down to 65 milliseconds. That's massive. The latency has also improved for users outside of the US with a mean latency down by up to 25% in the worst case latency, reduced up to 35%. So even 25 or 35% overseas, that is still a lot in a short period of time. Remember, this is since January. That's only a couple of months. That's pretty damn good. It continues, driving down the latency is important to help online gaming and video calls run smoothly on the Starlink network. The company has been monitoring the latency rates by collecting anonymized measurements from millions of Starlink routers every 15 seconds. That's a ton of data. SpaceX adds that the internet data over Starlink needs about 10 milliseconds to make a round trip from the user's Wi-Fi router up to the orbiting satellite and then go to the ground station. Now, they're just guesstimating, just coming up with this 10 milliseconds, but I really believe that it's eight. Anyways, it continues. However, the Starlink network can suffer from additional latency from the software-based limitations such as, quote, unneeded processing delays, unoptimized buffers and unnecessary packet drops that force retries. That's basically like CRC errors. That could end up being a problem and obviously slowing things down. Now they have a picture of how the data goes from your home up to a satellite, back down to a ground station, then over to your point of presence or your NOC or your network operations center, and then finally out to the webs. Now, what's interesting here is, and I don't know if this is a slip up, but look at that image. Doesn't this look kind of interesting? And the reason I say this is, be remember like a couple of video goes, I said, listen, my prediction is that we will see Starlink on cars, right? I said that all Teslas will have Starlink built into the roof. And I think that other cars are going to start getting small little dish, like literally eight inch tiny Starlink dish on the top of the cars. Remember I said that? Well, look at this image. Is that like a oops? <laughs> look at that car with Starlink strapped to the top of it. It's completely flat. It looks like a, I don't know, like a sunroof, but it's a Starlink. This is an image right from SpaceX. I don't know if that is an accident or what, but that bodes well for my prediction that we're gonna see Starlink on cars. I'm telling you, we will see it. It'll be ubiquitous. Every car is gonna have Starlink on it. This is my prediction. Anyways, I digress as I always do. In response, the company has been working on ironing out inefficiencies with new algorithms. This includes the addition of, quote, active query management, or what I call QoS, right? Quality of service. I'll get into that in just a second. Which can prevent a large user download on a Starlink installation from affecting the latency of another user's computer while they're gaming, or maybe while they're telecommuting, or where they're going through some type of conference or meeting or Google meeting or Zoom or whatever, right? I'll tell you about that in just a second. Quote, over the past several months, monitoring and metrics have also been added across the network to measure latency on every subsystem down to the millisecond, the company added. We have rigorously tuned our algorithm to prefer pass with low latency, no matter how small the difference, and to remove all sources of unnecessary and non-physical latency. So this is what is very important. Like I said, QoS, they are using AI or their algorithms to figure out what data is important and what is not important, what is going to produce too much latency and what won't and which path is better to take the data, right? It is doing this manipulation. And then it's also thinking about 
Now, not on a local level, but on a external level as an ISP level, it's thinking about what data is going to affect what you're doing. So that if you are once again sitting there gaming and now someone else on the network is downloading a massive file, it says, hey, Let's slow down that download so that this person that's gaming is not going to be affected. Same thing holds true as if you're doing a Zoom meeting or some type of Google meeting or whatever it is, right? It's going to prioritize certain applications or certain things, certain data packets down to the packet level, not session level. I'm not gonna get into all of that, but packet level is so damn important in comparison to session level. Anyways. It continues, according to the company's official map, the results are causing many US Starlink users to experience latency rates between 30 milliseconds and 42 milliseconds. To bring the rates down further, SpaceX says this, you can expect latency to continue to improve over the coming weeks and months as we prioritize software changes, build additional ground infrastructure, ground stations, okay, maybe more pops, we'll get into that in a second, and launch more satellites. Another tactic also involves orbiting the satellites at a closer distance to Earth. We just talked about that yesterday, right? They're gonna move their satellites from 530 kilometers down to 330 kilometers. That is going to save two milliseconds. So once again, I was saying that we're probably at about eight milliseconds right now, it's going to get down to six. And if we do take that two milliseconds by lowering those satellites into consideration, they will most likely be able to get to a four millisecond round trip from your dish to the satellite and back, four milliseconds. That will definitely get Elon Musk to his magical sub 20 milliseconds, what he's looking for when it comes to latency. I think it will happen. They finalized with the company reported that they added an additional 400,000 subscribers since December. So they went from 2.2 million to 2.6 million subscribers. That is unbelievable. And they show the map and whatnot here. So the things that we need to take into consideration or, or to remember is they are making these changes and they're doing these updates. Now, I listed all of the updates that they're doing and the 222 Starlink updates that they have done since January is a lot. But they also added that they've done 193 satellite software updates, 75 gateway software updates. Those are in the point of presence or in those ground stations. And then finally, 57 Wi-Fi updates. That's Wi-Fi right in the router that you're using itself. So it is a major, major feat that's going on behind the scenes. These engineers are working continuously. Once again, what they are working on is basically QoS or quality of service, but on an ISP level. And I think this is awesome because right now we're using it when we bond all of our internet connections, AT&T, which sucks, AT&T, Starlink, as well as T-Mobile. I bond all three of them together when I go live and I use Speedify to do it. And what Speedify does is it decides what is important, what packets are important, not just the session, but what packets are important. And if I'm streaming, it's gonna prioritize those packets. If I'm gaming, it's gonna prioritize those packets. Matter of fact, they gave us a promo code. If you go to jcristina.com forward slash speed, all right, jcristina.com forward slash speed, you'll get a discount from those people too. They're awesome, I use them all the time. Anyways, so this is very important. I love to see that they're actually doing what we would do in a network operations center as a system administrator that I am sitting on a fiber switch, for example, doing all that QoS. They are doing it for us in all of the different softwares that they have access to, the Wi-Fi, the router itself, the actual software that is in the satellites. Everything has been updated hundreds of updates since January. They're not sitting on their laurels like most ISPs are. They're like, yeah, whatever. They're not doing that. They're trying to continuously get better. And like I said, we're going to see four milliseconds round trip 
Okay, mark my words, four milliseconds round trip. And then when you add on the ground latency of your ground station, as well as the point of presence, your pops, moving the data around, we will definitely see sub 20 milliseconds with SpaceX Starlink, I promise you. Now, will it happen next month? I don't know, but within, I would say three months, four months, we should be able to see sub, sub, 20 milliseconds, what Elon Musk's goal is. Anyways, guys, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think that this is awesome like me? <laughs> or do you think it's kind of like whatever? Down below, let's have this discussion. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. And don't forget my teas and my merch and everything else. Pick something up. I would really appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.